Hi, and welcome to a small lecture about physical security. Now, it is no secret that physical security is actually one of the more serious parts of security, even though that we mainly talk about IT security as a whole. But what about the physical part? Now, I never really put much stress on it on my channel, but I am beginning to do more different things in the area of doing, you know, uh, home bait stuff. I make my own Wi-Fi jammers, sniffers, deauthors. I just bought myself a lockpick set from Amazon. And basically I'm trying to lockpick different kinds of things at the moment, trying to become a somewhat okay from novice to not that novice anymore, maybe a beginner, semi-advanced user. And I'm gonna stop there because what I'm gonna do is mainly to talk about this issue about picking, choosing the right lock and picking the wrong lock easily. So with a few tools for a few dollars, you can actually get pretty far. Now in this lecture, I'm gonna talk about physical security. And this is also a lecture that I do give my students sometimes on my, on my school. Uh, I just created a new version of it right now. So this is gonna be the first version for you guys on YouTube. So I think it's just dig right in. Now, first of all, what is physical security? We just talked about it in short, but it is actually the protection of everything you have. So if you cannot obtain physical security, all your devices, your data, your internet access, all these things you're trying to protect behind a wall, behind a lock, whatever, is kinda, you know, not protected. So it, be, it will be vulnerable to any kind of attack, breach, you know, physical entry, someone walking right in, taking your hard disk out of your hand, stealing whatever thing you have, you know, it's really easy, everything. So basically, I just wanna say, physical security is the number one top priority thing you need to focus on always when you have a company, or just basically if you wanna be safe in your home. Uh, additionally, you can say that the images that I put on my slides, they're gonna be um, mostly images in this slide. I have more or less no text. This is the one slide with the most text, I think it is. So I'm basically gonna talk from the images. Now, steps in getting access by the means of physical security. Now, of course, if we just walk right in, that would be the easiest part. One of the ways you can do that is actually trying to get a hold of a clone, you know, a card, sorry. So if you have some sort of card at your hand, you know, any kind of access card, you can find something that doesn't say anything crazy about me. Um, if I have something, I have my very old Fitness World card here. Doesn't really say anything. It's right there. I don't work out in Fitness World anymore. I do work out in another gym, but not fitness world, all right? So, this particular card here, for example, you know, at some point, it, um, there's a number behind me, if I should just hide that, it's my, you know, old number, but you can see any old card have these magnet stripes, right? And these kind of magnet stripes are programmable, so I can take this card and basically like beep, and then they can put on a, a particular number on it, that's gonna be active in the system. Now, the thing is, if if I wanted, you know, access to, you know, Fitness World, for example, to give a given case, I would need a valid member number that would be accepted by the machine in the, at the entry, and the, well, the, the start of the building where you enter the gym. Now, that could be obtained by me, you know, reading a card or something from a distance, or just, maybe asking someone if they can, you know, <laughs> put their card on my device. That would be a bit suspicious, I would say, but, but you know, can also just stand close to someone. At some point, I'm gonna pick something up, you know, and bam, there you have it. It may even be that just the number itself, because I know that we all have a member number, I could just try and and, and, and look for other member numbers. Or uh, basically I could just ask for the people, hey, what member number do you have? 
I just want to know if the mind is incremental. You know, just you can ask stupid questions, and when you ask stupid questions, people tend to think that you ask stupid, so they might not even <laughs> consider that as an actual, you know, uh, security issue. So that's one way. Another way is actually obtaining, you know, a card you can you can hold in your person that's gonna um, look like that you actually work in the company. So that could be anything from, you know, these kind of cards that are presented here. For example, on if you can, if you need some sort of way to get access, and 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 you are, you know, a press, uh, you you're like a um, what's that called? A journalist, or maybe you just need a card that looks like that. You can easily buy some some machinery and stuff from Amazon that you know that that will create these kind of you know prints and cards. And, and basically that's you know gonna be the way in so you if you can if you can figure out a way to create a card and um, just put it on your person you know you, no one might even suspect if you get into the building that you do not work there and not a part of the building there are different kind of measures that can be taken to 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 avoid people doing tailgating and this is the anti tailgating device or the mechanism it is what they also use in, in airports and other other you know other places where it is highly important that only the one person getting in is allowed to get in so basically um this is the thing it's uh you you, you put your card on the on on the red dot you know on on, on, on what is that called the, the count of it and then it's, your car is being read and beep it opens and when you walk through it kind of locks again is there a way for you to stick really close to another guy you know and just tailgate through it you know yeah probably but it's, it's gonna it's gonna be really weird you're gonna have to touch that person you're gonna be like glued together and people don't really do that so if if, if, if that is the, the way you you want to do it maybe um, it's not really gonna work uh, that well for you. Um, yeah. So I'm just looking at my four gigabytes USB pen I just found on my screen. All right. So other ways of of you to to get access, and this is actually a part of the other one where you're gonna clone the card. Is you could buy something like a Proxmark three RF. ID card reader and it, it can basically read any card you know you just need to be within around 30 to 40 you know centimeters I guess that's around 14 to 18 feet something like that and in in, in, in that distance and you can even you know um, get a one that is um, more powerful but I don't know the the implications are complications by that, but it's 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 definitely a way to, to 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 clone a card, and if you can clone a card in some way, you know that's really gonna be the way to go for you to get access to uh, whatever uh, building you need. So um, another another very interesting tool is called the UDT under the door tool. It's uh, something you probably have seen in movies at some point, you know, where they they kind of put this. Um, straight line you can see yes it looks like a some sort of metal rod a long metal rod a, a, a long pin in a way it's kind of long you know <laughs> you can probably see that in the picture why i have it that it kind of takes a, a a try or two but it is not you know difficult to use when you were when you're in hang of it but most doors got this mechanism of you know you can just pull down the handle and it just unlocks on the other side the side you have to protect it could be a hotel room for example this is a hotel so what what's up with the hotel rooms you know because okay so when companies go to you know business uh, trips and stuff they need some place to sleep and when they need some place to sleep it's quite common that the thing that they don't you know worry too much about is the premises where they are located so if the premises is not up to the standards of having you know high security uh, or you don't have any sort of protocol saying like only one can leave the room at a time protocol different kind of ways you know no way to lock or secure the door if it's just standard everything standard you know door standard mechanisms the UDT tool can definitely be the way to get in and steal your hardware computers or even infect it 
Talking about tailgating, this is another one, you know, where you can just be like, hello, can I follow along? And the employer might say, sure, because we want to help people in most occasions. We would like to make sure that people do get access. You know, some people might say, listen, I cannot give you access. I don't know who you are. So I'm sorry if you are actually. And then the, the, the person can do social engineering, say, hey, listen, you know, I... I've been here many times, you know, you, should I really go to the other side of the door and meet you and, 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 and tell the boss you, you didn't want to let me in because I'm going to job interview or something like that, you know, and then you're going to play on people's guilt. And that is one of the things that um, that's going to be uh, used in this kind of uh, attack. And I just want to say that it's it's quite common and and it's it's very unpleasant to be the, the 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 employee saying no to this kind of stranger because they can be educated in being um, using different kind of psychology tricks on you so you you you're tricked into saying yeah okay well then let's tell no one then <laughs> that is probably what's going to happen anyways lock picking is another you know very interesting area that I recently just opened and and I'm going to do a class on lock picking, you know, and 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 this this is physical security. I'm not gonna be a master lock pick at any point. I I am gonna build some some tools on my own. I I watched some videos where people used electric truth brothers, you know, to create a a automatic rake tool. A rake tool is where like the the thing is vibrating like that. Yeah, I know it looks weird, but <laughs> but it, it is the way it is. And inside the lock, the pins is gonna be like. Bum, 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 bum raked, I don't know if that is, but this is kind of what you see in the image, um, same kind of principle as a bump key, and a bump key is something you just like, doof, doof, you just push inside, and you make the pins jump up and down, as this is the pins, or, or the spring, whatever you're going to call it, I think they call it the driver here as well, but you know, pins, whatever, so they they just going to pop up, yeah, could, they, are do, they are actually called pins, I'm just, it's just a weird image, um, and um that many different tools you can get and just taking a a snapshot you know from below you can see a um, very interesting overview of a wide variety of different kind of tools you can buy from a dollar and 62 plus tax to you know even more you know the, the bottom prices in us dollars and the, the other prices in, in, in my currency danish crowns but you know you can get anything and I, you know i i bought this uh, set i have right here I'm gonna show it to you again. It's um, made in China. It's a pretty fairly cheap one. You know, it, it costed me like uh, I don't know. It's a 38 piece plus four pieces lock pick set with user's manual. You know, it got four different locks and stuff and different things. And I just tried it. It worked pretty fine. You know, it's a beginner one. It's just for playing. But I can definitely lock things up. So. <laughs> I think it's going to be pretty fun to play with some real lock with that lock pick set and use it in my class for real. So, but as you can see, physical security and lock picking is not that you know uncommon. If there's a back door, a dark corridor, or something, you know, no one really going to notice you. And especially if you, if you have a partner that you can, you know, um, do the thing with the crime with, then definitely it's going to be easier to just check if someone is. Um, there or not. You can also create your own uh, homemade lockpicks and I I do have a video but since this is my channel I don't really want to show other people's content without actually having the having really checked it out but I'm going to give you the link it's on YouTube that's not illegal or anything <laughs> but um, as you can see here there are many different ways you can use bobby pins you can use normal small pens, you know, the, the paper clips you can use, where whatever you need to create whatever lockpick, whatever rake tool, whatever thing you need. You can even use a toothbrush. As you can see, I posted a few of them. You know, I'm actually going to try that, you know, buy a cheap toothbrush and have my own automatic rake tool. That's going to be hilarious, but <laughs> I'm going to create that anyway. Uh, when you're going to have access to whatever, you know, building you need access to of course there are more different ways to get access to building you can break window put you know but I'm, I'm talking about stuff that is not harmful directly to the building's uh, physical uh, premise so then you go to post exploitation and then you can hey take a look at this you know image that i found and check out 
what do people have hanging around in their office, right? First of all, you have the door to the office. It could be open because it's very normal when you first have access to the, uh, well, the main door. People tend to be like, okay, so we cannot close the other door. And that's like, if, <laughs> all right, so <laughs> translate that to web application security. So we do like when people logged in, we don't care to do prepared statements for a screen injection because ah, we don't care, they're already authenticated. So they can just do a screen injection and hack the server. You know, that doesn't really work that way, right? So we always have to make sure that even though that you're in the building, you know, and, and the, the main door is breached, the, the main perimeter is breached, your secondary level is also secure. And if you look at the numbers, not gonna through, go through every single one of them, you have different kind of things that like wallet for number two, you know, stickers and stuff for six, seven, eight, an actual open computer for, for three and four, you know, um, you, you got different things, the trash can, you got maps, your briefcase, that was kind of all the things, but there's so many things you can, you know, get your hands on and that's, that's going to be an issue. So another thing that's going to be a big issue is if, if you have actual, you know, actual ethernet access physical cable access is that a thing even more you know do people just skip the idea of having physical access or is there actually still physical access happening in the world um that's going to be a great great question because i don't really see that a lot but let me let me put up a scenario for you guys okay so when you are a teacher or student, you know, most of your access is done through Wi-Fi, which is understandable because as a student, you need to walk around and you cannot have a cable with you and it's easier. You need to have all this cable management, etc., etc., yada, yada. The same goes for a teacher. But as soon as you have a actual working spot, this is where I sit to do my job, then in most occasions, people don't have laptops, they have desktops. And that is very normal because desktop is just better and easier and superior in many ways to a desk, to a, to, to, to a laptop because it's easier to manage, to install, to move around, faster, cheaper, etc., etc., yada, yada, yada. So when you get access to the actual building, you find an Ethernet cable input socket plug, whatever you call it, in the wall, and you can basically just take your RJ45 uh, uh, stick and like, plug it right into your wall, and then boom, you have access. That's gonna be the problem because you don't need access codes for, for Ethernet. It doesn't really work that way. Wi-Fi is a different thing. If you just plug a cable in the wall, you're on the network. Boom, you can install anything like command control servers. You know, you can infiltrate the network, you can sniff, you can put up hardware to, to, to sniff on the network and so on, so on. So people are gonna do that. Is that a bit too much? Well, I don't know if you're gonna say if it's too much or anything, but... Um, I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, it's, it's, it's what is possible and it definitely something you should be looking out for. You know, red teamers out there, you, you got me, I guess. I guess you got me. <laughs> and destructive actions are gonna be more the fun part here because this is, good, this is where you can, again, use very, very small amount of p dollars and below, you know, you can pick your own size and whatever. They all do the same. This chip looks a lot like the uh, the uh, Terminator chip, like from, from Terminator movie, where they pull that chip out of the brain from the Terminator, but it's not it's not that chip, it just looks like that. There are different ways, different USB kills you can get. A USB kill is basically just a USB stick, you know, like it could be anything. Let me just find one for you I can show. I have a USB stick right there, and an MCD. Uh, there we go. And this is just any any USB stick I have from a SANS call at some point in time. And it's going to get to 64 gigabyte one. And you basically plug it into your computer and it says, tick, 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 and, tick, and it then discharge a high voltage discharge of like 230 volts or something. And it's basically going to try and fry any kind of hardware behind it. So what can you use that for? Now, anything that can be destroyed should be definitely 
be a part of your risk assessment. So I want to say if you can destroy some entry point or something like that, and it might not work, which will then grant you access or anything that's behind some sort of, you know, electronic mechanism and you have an access to a USB port, well, basically, boom, you can kill it. In most occasions, the 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 um, the hardware cannot withstand and it's just gonna fry, you know, die, death. You cannot get it back. So it's not something you test on your own computer. It's be really bad. Wi-Fi jammers can be bought for like five dollar, three dollar. You can create your own. You can also buy whatever you like. You can buy um, the different things. Um, uh, you can buy like I'm either some slides gonna get to back later, but but, but basically I actually also bought bought the SP eighty two sixty six board, and I bought three of them. So I'm gonna create some different kind of Wi-Fi tools. I'm gonna create separate videos about it as well, but not today, not in this video. It's more like a presentation of what is possible. So Wi-Fi jammer is another thing you can just basically lie around and you can jam the the the, the company's Wi-Fi for some time. You know, make them call a technician, and then you can be that technician or something like that and and you know you can even social engineer them to to call you know the the, the wi-fi technicians that you you plan the different kind of posters and flyers you know free easy cheap whatever you know so that is one way for you to get access you know sniffers again uh, very interesting you know you i i don't know this sick b from it's from aliexpress it's like uh, 99 cents. That's going to be really cheap, right? So if you can, you know, monitor the Wi-Fi access from below in some way and, and you can see where's the most, uh, where are people most active in, in, in a certain way, you can also buy, a, you know, a an, an directional antenna which can be put on these kind of devices you see below, the alpha cards. The, the antennas you see are the alpha cards and the antennas you most see on, on cards are the omnidirectional, so they're, they're like all around, but the directional is more like a flat surface that's most occasions black. That's more like like my hand flat and like small, you know, rect, um, rectangle, what is it called? The rect rectangle, rectangular, there we go, shape, <laughs> rectangular shape, and, 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 and it's a directional one, so you can really direct all your attention to a certain area, so many different ways to just sniff for Wi-Fi. Also, you can buy this watch. Um, it is not the newest Apple Watch, I'm sorry. It is the Wi-Fi The Auth Attack Watch. Um, <laughs> it, it will cost you around $50 if you want the used one, but you can also go up to around $200. And I, this is insane. In the, but you can build it your own way, you know? You can basically build it um, as I showed you in the picture to the right, but you can also just buy the chip, which I did, and you know, with that chip, you you can you can take any you know um, mini USB stick like that, you know, mini USB, and then some some other you know end. This is the it's a female uh, entry point. So, but depending on what you need, you can just buy your converters and plug it into your phone and it's gonna be enough to power this small device just through the phone. And it's gonna create a Wi-Fi. Well, it, it does some software you need to flash onto the memory, but I'm not really gonna go into this kind of things right now because it's, it's um, actually it's on the wall, it's called Space Hoon. I have really, <laughs> I totally didn't see that because Space Hoon, is the um, is the guy on GitHub? I don't know if it's guy or person or whatever, but it's a name you're gonna search for on GitHub. And you're gonna get the software you can flash on this chip, and then you can create your own Wi-Fi the author. Not that difficult at all. Things you can also do when you have access to the you know the, the premise is is to install malware, spyware stuff to, you know, in exfiltrate or infiltrate even further. You know, it's really got up to you. You've got a wide variety of different kind of things you can pick and choose from. You can also go, go as far and say, I just want money now, so I might want to pick up the price. So I'm going to try myself with some ransomware and see if they, they, they bite the apple. So that's, that's another way. 
copy transfer data from device to device, another way of doing whatever you know hack you're gonna do. I recommend that you, um, I recommend that you, <laughs> well, I wanna say that, you know, recommend that you always shut out, shut down, turn off your devices, lock all the doors, you don't keep your, your, your devices, you know, lying on the table because people can basically copy paste it and it's gonna be a big problem if you've got access to the premise. Modify systems, files, or settings gonna be another one. Also, require physical access, but that, this is what we talk about right now, where you get access to the physical device. And this is what I, you know, I hear developers say this all the time. It's like, listen, Daniel, if I have got access physical to our lab, if we've got a physical access to the lab, right? What does it matter? It's like, yeah, actually, <laughs> little way to say it because maybe they got physical access. So let me just ask this question. Having a database with leaked passwords, right? Or having access to the database with passwords. Um, if they encrypted and behind two factor authentication and they like hashed in proper ways, it would be more or less the same. <coughs> but of course we would not like that, but it's just the way it is. Physical access do give access to more. Cannot deny that. But um, it doesn't mean that you're dead meat on the market. It would mean that you your security now gonna withstand the biggest test on them all. Can your security installations and controls withstand an actual physical attack? That's gonna be a very interesting question. I cannot answer that for you, but you should definitely look into it. The conclusion is that you know security is not free. We have the potential cost of absence of security and they have the cost of implementation of physical security systems. And you can basically take the dollar tree from the right side of the screen and say, the more dollars you implement, the money, more money you implement into security, the better the security will be. Well, yeah, maybe because some security is plug and play doesn't work that well. All right. So I want to say that the, the all message from me to you is that, um, when you have a way to secure yourself, please do it. Many companies, schools especially, have no way, especially a school, you can just walk right in because you look like a student. Who can I, who's, and you don't walk in with, <coughs> with five bags full of antennas and say, oh, I'm just a student. And you don't do that. You just go in like anyone else. Then you in, right? So I want to say, I really hope that you got the point from this video. It's going to be as fast as a lecture in as ever been created um, with minimal, minimal amount of text. I prefer the storytelling way this um, a lot more um, because it kind of engage you more to look at the screen and continue to 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 fantasize about what could this image actually mean all right so if you like this video and you got this far i want to congratulate you <laughs> on getting to the last part please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video have any questions leave a comment below i'm going to back to you as fast as i can so once to stay se secure in the physical world all right see you again online